Hello there and welcome to the Card Grotto. Today I'm looking at the Arteza Real Brush Pens. Arteza kindly contacted me and asked if I would like to review them. So that's what I'm doing today. They kindly sent me the 96 pen set. They do also come in sizes of 12, 24, 48 and 96. So although I was sent these pens uh, to try out, I do actually have a pack of the pens myself that um, were kindly gifted to me for Christmas one year from my mum. So I have used them for a couple of years now, but something did put me off and that was the fact that they didn't have a numbering or colouring system. So I had no idea which colour was which. I There was no numbering system, they didn't have any names to the colours or anything like that. So that was really difficult for me to be able to use them effectively I felt so I if I wanted to share anything online using them I couldn't tell people what colors I'd used but also just for my own reference if I wanted to use that same color again I had no idea whether that's the same color again without swatching it out I could make myself a numbering system for them but that wouldn't obviously make any sense to anyone else so I'm really glad that they have redesigned them and now they have that coloring num numbering system on them in this pack they all come in really nice trays it does come with a a water brush as well personally I'm not that keen on these kind of water brushes this one is a pretty good water brush but personally I do prefer to use a paintbrush and water like I said they come on these trays which is really nice and if you want to keep them in the box I think this is really handy the trays themselves coordinate with how the numbering system is kind of laid out on the back of the box which is nice and they're all kind of in like color family so you've got all of the yellows and the oranges together you've got the pinks and the reds the purples the blues going into the aquas and then the greens here and then at the end you've got some more kind of olivey greens some browns and some new neutral colours. So like I said this would be really nice if you want to keep them in the packs. I probably won't personally but I do really like how they are. So the pen themselves as you can see they're quite a bit longer than some other brands of the kind of like watercolour markers. It's got a really nice um, black colour on the barrel and then you've got the colour at the top there of the colour of the ink and then you've got a really nice um, colour there sort of labelled on the nib as well. You've got the lid which is clear which is quite nice so that you can see them quite clearly inside and then the nib itself is made from nylon fibres so this like the name suggests a real brush it is nylon fibres so you can kind of spray spread it out like you would a paintbrush but you also get a really nice thin nib as well this here I'm just showing you is where the colouring and numbering system is and this is one of the original pens and as you can see it doesn't have any of that numbering or colour kind of system on it so I'm really glad that they've changed that now and then on the back of the marker they've just got some information about that it's a water-based ink that it's non-toxic that it's light fast and just Kind of, kind of says it's made in USA and things like that. So what I do when I get any new colouring medium, I make a colour chart. I personally just really like to do this. I have coloured these pens onto Bristol Smooth Strathmore paper. That's probably the paper that I will use, but I didn't actually use it on my project today. And I will talk about that a little bit later. I'm just showing you here the different colours that are, comes in this set. There isn't a huge amount of neutrals, but there is tons and tons of greens. I think they went a little bit overboard, but it's really nice if you happen to really like colouring florals and foliage and things like that. Again, there isn't a huge Huge amount of yellows but you can mix colors if you wanted to so I'm really glad that I just took that time to swatch all of those out so that I know when I'm coloring so to get onto the project I have stamped out this image here this is the clearly besotted pick a peony stamp and I've stamped that down onto some Arteza watercolor paper I've stamped that with VersaFine onyx black ink and then heat embossed that in clear I've got some paint brushes here that I'm going to use and also a tub of water. I don't use all of these sizes but these are round brushes. So let's get into the colouring. Personally I like to add the colour directly from the pen. So I'm just laying some colour down where I think I want the darkest shades to be and then I'm using that paintbrush that has some water on it to blend that colour out. And as you can see that's blending really quite nicely. 
this is the lightest shade that I'm using and this is the blush pink in the end I don't you don't actually really see this color at all but I do really like to work like lightest to darkest with these pens just so that I can build up the color as I go I did find that with quite a lot of watercolor kind of markers technically these aren't a watercolor marker but I think we tend to call them that in the crafting industry they are a water-based ink rather than a watercolor so once these have dried they do end up being almost permanent so you, th that's great for layering like in the case that I'm doing here I'm going to layer up a few different colors but it does mean that you have a kind of a small window of opportunity to blend the color out because once it's dried like I said it's almost permanent and you can't really blend that color out so generally for the most part I do go petal to petal in this instance with the coloring of the flowers just so that I've got enough time to blend that color out um, with the first layer of colors I did go quite quickly and sometimes I went over them uh, you know like I didn't necessarily go petal to petal but I had enough time just to move that color around here I'm going in with my darkest shade and realized that the watercolor paper was peeling slightly I do really love this watercolor paper actually and in the end I didn't really get much peeling so what I did here I let the color dry completely I am kind of going wet on wet there and sometimes that doesn't always work with um, watercolor pens or these ink pens I should say and so I'm just letting that dry and then I'm going to go back in and add that layer afterwards so this here is again is that lightest layer which is the blush pink and I'm just going over the all of the flowers here and then the second layer I used the rouge pink and then this here is my darkest layer and this is the rosewood I will have all of the colors that I use listed over on my blog so I'm just adding that color again where I think the darkest color would be sort of where the shadows are and blending that color out and I do find especially with pinks and reds they do have a lot of pigment in them and so the color did move quite a bit and because I wanted some areas to be quite light I moved the color a bit and then I re-wet my paintbrush and uh, have a clean paintbrush so there's no color on it and then move that out a bit further and personally I find that that works quite well with these kind of pens so as you can see here I just move my color back into the water and then go back into it again and if I've got too much color I can pick that up with a cloth or a piece of paper towel and that just lifts that color up but again you do have to work fairly quickly with that so I'm just going in here some of the areas I do go over a few times just to get enough of that pigment down I want the darker areas to be really quite dark and in the end this did turn out to be a bit darker than I expected but I do like how it came out nonetheless so I'm adding in some yellows into the center of the peonies and I found that they were a bit bright um, for this particular image so I do end up going in a few different times just to add a bit more darkness into those areas so at this moment in time I do have two layers on the other flowers here as well and then I'm going back in here with the darkest shade again and just adding that darkest um, shade into the darker areas and then blending that out again like I did on that flower at the bottom I did find when working with these pens not to have too much of a wet brush I do take off some of the excess water onto a reusable cloth here as you can see and I also do that with some of the pigment as well I just find that that works out quite nicely for me so I'm going to go back here like I said with some darker shades for the inside of the peonies obviously I did have to speed some of this image up on the camera this did take me about 50 minutes to color from start to finish um, but I did enjoy doing it and like I said it was kind of a bit of an experiment to see how the pens work I really do like them I think they blend out really quite nicely there were a couple of colors that I didn't think blended out as nicely as, as others but they were quite light colors and sometimes that does happen because there isn't so much pigment in the color so here I'm working on the leaves and I'm going in with kind of like a turquoise green I think this is called turtle green and then I'm going in with the bright green which is definitely a bright green and I'm adding that on to the 
other areas of the leaf and then I'm going to go in with the paintbrush and kind of blend those two colors together it did end up that most of it was a lot more of the darker shade so I do change my mind in how I color these and I go back to doing the method of adding the lighter color first over the entire image and then I'll go back in with the darker shade and add that on top and I found that that worked a bit better so just going in here with that other color and then sometimes I do go back in with the brighter green and just go over that area and then I found that it was quite bright so I did use a paper towel just to lift up some of that pigment and I think that that worked out quite nicely it just kind of muted the colors slightly although they they are still quite bright but I wanted something to kind of compete with the darkness of the flowers but not kind of overshadow them if that makes sense just adding a bit more of that dark color inside and then here I'm going to go around the outside edges with a colour. I just want something kind of in the background and this is the Palmer Grey colour. And this, I love this colour, it's so nice. It's kind of like a bluey grey. So I'm just adding that colour on the outside of the areas. I'm adding more colour sort of towards the sort of crevices of the image and then blending that out. And this time I'm using a size 4. For the actual flowers themselves and the leaves I did use a size 2. But sometimes I do like to use a larger brush for the outside edges just so that I can get a really nice blend and kind of blend that out onto white. And then if you did want to have an even lighter colour, you can actually add your colour onto an acrylic block. And I do that in a minute because I felt that I wanted a bit more colour, but I didn't want to go back in with the brush in case it got too dark. So I'm just placing that colour onto an acrylic block here, picking that up with a wet paintbrush again. And then I can just add that colour colour on. And then I'm cleaning off my brush, adding some more water to it just to blend that out into white. So my thoughts on these pens are that they are really good price point, definitely cheaper than some of the other brands that are out there, um, but they don't, like they're definitely no lower quality because they're a bit cheaper. Um, I really do like them. I'm really happy that they've come up with a numbering system that really did put me off, like I said, originally, but it is really nice that they have that numbering system now and I can use them a lot more. The only downside that I found to them is that they don't have them open stock so you cannot buy a pen just on their own if they run out of ink which is a bit unfortunate. You would have to buy a whole new set so I'm hoping that Arteza does come out with those in the future. So that's the colouring done. To finish off the card I added the panel onto an A2 sized white card base and then I stamped out a sentiment from the Clearly Exotic Tiny Type Set. I stamped that onto some black cardstock and heat emboss that and then I just finished off the card with a few iridescent jewels. Links to the products that I have used will be in the description bar on YouTube and also over on my blog. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon.